is this the most famous absinthe cocktail of all time? As you all know, absinthe and artiste go hand in hand and one massive fan of the Green Fairy was none other than Ernest Hemingway. So much so that when asked to provide a recipe for a celebrity recipe book in 1935, he submitted The Death in the Afternoon. A name shared with one of his novels and a reference to the harsh realities of bullfighting and mortality in general really, because he was a pretty cheery guy. It consisted of a full shot and a half of absinthe in a glass of champagne and he advised to drink three to five of these which would presumably render the drinker as dead as the bull he was referencing. It's worth noting that absinthe was banned almost everywhere at this point as I have discussed in my absinthe deep dive. So you can't help but wonder if Hemingway had his tongue firmly in his cheek with this recipe. Now, anyone who watched me try out an old recipe for a Corpse Reviver number three, which was pretty similar to this one, will know that this combination isn't honestly one of my favorites. So let's see if I can make it tasty enough to win myself over. Given that this drink is meant to be light and crisp, a quite delicately flavored absinthe works best. Um, this one is Perno, so obviously one of the most famous and widely available and sort of original absinthe. Um, and it really fits the bill being just quite subtle and the aniseed flavor is nice and sweet, which softens out the whole drink. Any dry sparkling wine will work, but I wanted to use actual champagne for the full experience. La Hurt Frères are great grower producers. They produce wines with really lovely acid and a lot of complexity. Uh, and they also do these cute little tiny bottles, so I don't waste too much. Although I guess having to finish off a bottle of champagne is never really a bad thing. And a little dash of sugar syrup is optional. Um, I find literally just about five mils or a bar spoon makes it a much more integrated and approachable drink. Uh, most modern recipes also do dial back the absinthe a bit from Hemingway's prescription, and I prefer it to be more of an accent as well. To make this drink, you'll need a champagne flute, a jigger, and a bar spoon, 20 mils or two thirds of an ounce of absinthe, five mils or one sixth of an ounce of sugar syrup, around a hundred mils, so about three and a third ounces of champagne or sparkling wine. First things first, we better get this champagne open. Literally my favorite sound in the world. Now Hemingway kept this really simple, presumably because if you are drinking them and have to keep making them, you know, I think by the second or third one, it would be a bit of a struggle to achieve much. So we're just gonna go with 20 mils of absinthe, a bar spoon of sugar syrup, and then all you need to do is fill it up with the champagne. All right, let's give this a taste. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest, because absinthe and aniseed is not my favorite flavor in the world, and this is obviously, you know, it's gonna be right front and center in this drink, but we'll see how we go. It does have a really lifted floral nose. Obviously, you've got all the kind of bubbles and lovely breadiness from the champagne coming up with just that little hint of aniseed as well. I have to say it's much nicer than when I did uh, the previous, the Corpse Reviver number three, just that little hint of sugar and um, kind of paring back the absinthe a little bit just makes it all much more uh, sort of comes together much uh, more nicely. And the champagne, I think using actual champagne, it does have that little kind of nutty, bready um, sort of flavor to it that means that it's not just super acidic. Um, as much as there is a nice acid, it's definitely, uh, yeah, a little bit rounder and richer and so balances out quite well. It was never gonna be my favorite, but that's, I could definitely drink at least one of them, I would say. I guess if he was drinking five of these at a time, it's easy to see why Hemingway kept this so simple and it is a really crisp and refreshing drink that absinthe lovers will absolutely enjoy. But for those that don't like absinthe, probably just stick to champers as it is. The death in the afternoon. So now you know.